Ebony can be a very complicated game, so in today's video, we're going to be checking out some of the things that new players get wrong. One of the key things is generals. As you can see in the tavern, you can get generals such as this, the really cheap 1,000 ones or 100,000 ones. They are not good. In the long run, they are essentially worthless. So remember that before investing in these generals, as they're not going to be used in the future. In the portraits section, you can see epic historical generals, which some are better than others, but at least investing in a historical general is better than one that's not. And then you also have the legendary historical ones down here, often at the bottom. You can browse all of them in here, you can't buy them from here, but make sure that when you do get some, like on this brand new account I started half an hour ago, you will still get some of them, such as Constance and this other one here. They'll come with a default skill. On skills, by the way, I don't have any because it's a brand new account at the moment, but when you have skills, you want to select the ones you want, add level one skills until all three slots are filled, then replace the level ones with higher levels to ensure you're not wasting the higher levels first. For more information on that, leave a comment or check out my other videos if you need more information to actually make sure you get it right. But basically it's about saving those higher level books and not wasting them by overriding each other. Another key thing players get wrong is joining alliances that are not going to be active going into the future. Ebony releases servers very frequently. This means you need to join top alliances to ensure you have enough players to maintain activity and to ensure you're getting the most rewards each week. I suggest joining a top three alliance, at worst top five. If for some reason you're not powerful enough, you might need to join a lower one until you can join a higher one. But it doesn't matter if you make friends down here in lower alliances, you need to join a top alliance. On that point of rewards, make sure when you join one of those top alliances, you go to Alliance Wars and you join Alliance Rallies with other players with one cavalry troop, meaning that you can have the person that started the rally do all the hard work killing a boss monster, and you get the exact same rewards by only sending one cavalry troop. Why you might do this is because the key thing to be doing on your new account is leveling up the keep. This keep needs to be upgraded before any other building can go to the same level. Although you want to be training cavalry troops to kill boss monsters, leave it to bigger players until it makes sense for you to train these. Like I said, you can join their rallies with one mounted troop and still get the same rewards. When you do eventually start training cavalry to kill boss monsters yourself, after a, a few weeks or a month or two months, you're going to be wanting to get tier 10 or tier 9, which will require your building to be level 23 or level 25. This means you must get your keep up as quickly as possible, so avoiding training troops, aka wasting resources, before you get to those types of levels or tiers of troop is necessary. Make sure you're using the event center to your advantage to earn gems and other items. You can go through and read about all of the different events that are on right now. Often on the weekend you have like world boss, undead event that you can do with your alliance, so make sure you're doing those to earn gems. On the point of gems, truce agreements. In the city buffs tab, you can get truce agreements. These are necessary. Players sometimes complain in my comments about being attacked. That is, of course, part of the game. But to avoid it, you can use truce agreements. This is necessary to ensure your resources aren't taken, your troops aren't killed potentially permanently. It is a complete must, and sometimes a requirement for top alliances that you are always under a truce agreement unless actively attempting to fight someone. Other ways to earn gems in the tavern, you can do daily activity, Wheel of Fortune, login rewards via the shrine, you can claim things on the wall, again event center or the special events like crazy eggs. Make sure you go to in your inventory and claim things such as chests, but do not open resources unless you're going to actually use them, because otherwise it can be stolen. Many players make that mistake as well. Another key thing players forget, you can compose certain things. I don't have all of them on this brand new account I just started, but treasure maps, you can compose those to get better relic treasure maps. You can also compose resource production speed ups from 24 hour 100% boosts to an 8 hour 200% boost. So remember, some of your items can be composed to make even better ones. So do check that often, see what you have, see what they can be made into and make a decision on that to increase the possible growth of your city. 
As it relates to upgrading your keep, make sure you're not randomly upgrading everything at the same time. You might not necessarily need your warehouse to be particularly high in the beginning, your shrine don't, doesn't need to be particularly high, your tavern, until you're like keep 20 plus, there's more or less no point upgrading it. You will want to unlock the great general, general chest icon, I think at tavern 3 or 5. Past that, you don't need it. For a while, at least, you will need it eventually. The rally spot, you want to upgrade. Your academy for research, you want to upgrade. Your training buildings, you will want to upgrade. Of course, your wall, and potentially your production buildings outside of the wall as well. But other buildings, you don't really need to focus on until it makes sense to do so. We just mentioned the academy. Of course, there's many researches you can do. Some are necessary, as you can see. Uh, conscription will be needed as we scroll down in military you will need this one as the icon above it for certain keep upgrades and that will persist uh, downwards as well to the advanced conscription but generally speaking you want to stick to the advancement tab increasing your production speed gathering speed construction speed research speed and other such upgrades that are key to the growth of your city of course eventually you want to move on to military medical aid and potentially in the beginning even do alliance upgrades as this allows you to get your building times down talents are also important as well you want to get free construction in the very beginning perhaps build a duration probably not the one i did i did that by accident research speed maybe troop load or rescue it kind of depends what you're going to do i'm sure you can figure out the best way to go ahead but you can reset them at some point you might want to reset to get the offering uh boost Probably not March speed, it'd be either of these right to build a duration is good. Mortality can be good if you're attacking, uh, I believe it's boss monsters, but it's up to you really. On that point of talents and such, cultures, when you first pick one, you might look at culture features and think that you've made the best choice. But remember, the culture you pick, alongside the culture features, you will have a subordinate city, a default one that you get. This is the one I have. I'm not actually keep 11, so I can't look at it on this brand new account. But once you get it, we'll have a new tab in here and you can look at the buffs. So if we go back to cultures very quickly, Europe, the subordinate city for that, will have a construction boost. China, production speed. Japan will help you attacking other players. Korea, gathering resources. America, research speed. Russia is good for defense. And Arabia, is good for like the hospital like getting your capacity up so that will all stack on top of your culture features so you have to remember that your subordinate city will matter as well because it'll be the exact same type a huge thing that players get wrong is wasting precious materials on gear that is not worth building as you can see this one increases your stats by four uh, percent it can be upgraded to higher of course by upgrading the stars and as you go up, it increases quite a lot, all the way up through these red ones where you're getting much higher percentages. These are defaults. They can be increased by, I think it's usually about 50% when you upgrade the star level of these pieces of gear. But getting these lower ones, they're basically worthless. That can be slightly different for the rings as you can get double item drop rates from monsters, but it's still quite a low percentage. I often will go for the lowest yellow ones if it is the ring, such as this one, where it's a drop rate of 11% as a default. When it, go, when it comes to other types of gear, you want to be waiting for King's gear, if possible, before making anything, because the percentages on the lower ones are not good enough, and then you're wasting resources on obsolete gear in the future. This game has a lot of min-maxing that you can do. If you want to get into that kind of detail, do check out my other guides. But again, remember, concentrate on the keep level. Ignore troops unless you're a spender until you can get tier 9, especially tier 10 is what you really want to hold out for before training those troops in higher numbers. Use boss monsters that are being attacked by Alliance teammates to your advantage by joining them with one cavalry. Do not concentrate on power and don't spread yourself thin by researching, gathering researches for all resources and production for all resources. Try to split it between different resources Use all of your marches to attack boss monsters, explore relics, gather resources at all times. And again, when it comes to generals, you can have plenty of them, but make sure you're concentrating on a cavalry one for boss monsters, potentially an archer one first, at least, for attacking other players, 
and an archer or a siege one for defense in the beginning. You can look at getting other options for those three categories and others in the future. But remember, when it comes to gear, materials, gold, so on, it's very hard to get in the beginning, so don't waste it. That's going to be all for this video. Check out my other ones on the channel.